Hi, my name is Peter Walker. I'm a counselor, and I've entitled this reflection, It's What's Not. It's What's Not. Uh, I'm speaking to uh, this uh, dynamic in life of, well, I'm not sure, uh, chasing a carrot or trying to find the end of a rainbow. Uh, life promises much and even incites appetite and instills drive and desire but then fails to deliver and there seems to be a disconnect a breakdown um, if life promises and points and pulls and yet in it when we reach for it we can't find it there seems to be almost like a broken promise. So where, where is the prize? I think of the phenomenon often where we experience the drive, the impetus build are in things that are beautiful, things that are appealing and attractive, everything from music and rhythm and, and imagery and art. Uh, it can instill desire. Now, if we look at what we do when, when we're feeling it, is often we, we reach for something to, as it were, uh, take hold of, consummate that uh, craving to experience, to know, to live. Um, and often it's putting our hands to uh, a type of, an experience, um, taking and eating the fruit, as it were, and then there can often be um, a void, uh, a letdown, a disillusionment. Uh, a, even explicitly speaking, I think of uh, in the book A Movable Feast, and uh, the author writes about that sense of blue post intimate relationship, uh, a sense of almost a, a drop. And uh, we often experience that in life. We, we, everything points in a particular direction, wealth, health, but there never seems to be an arrival point. It's like life is promising what it can't deliver. So I've entitled this, It's What's Not. What's missing? What's going wrong? Romans 125 speaks of us as mankind having exchanged worship of the creator for the created and uh, we we as people often reach for something to experience uh, when really the appetite driving us is eternal and pure but then we reach for the impure it's all we know it's what we see it's what we're so certain is going to consummate this desire and this experience, but it does not. And we continually fall short. Then there's the further issue that often what it is we reach for are precisely those things that God has said we're not supposed to reach for. Things we want. Um, sexual immorality, the Bible speaks of, uh, which is a classic motif and a, and a classic trap spoken of throughout the Proverbs, spoken of throughout Jesus' teaching, the teachings of the New Testament. And so uh, what we often have is this major drive and temptation, and then we put our hands to something that fails to deliver, but also uh, fails to comply with the, the rules and the directions and the directives that God has given us, which he calls sin. So we're, we're, we're caught in this trap and we're like, well, Jesus, if, if we have such desire and it all looks like it comes from here and points here and happiness will be found here, why do you deny that to us? Why is happiness not found there? And not only that, it's not only the disillusionment, but we, we disappoint you. We sin against you in reaching for these things and now we have a double a, a, a double breakdown 
of, of not only not finding what we're looking for, but also, as it were, displeasing and rebelling against God and how we live. Well, where is this treasure? Where is it? In this broken world, a world that uh, Scripture describes to us as, as a world intrinsically fragmented by the rebellion of God against man, ultimately described and, and, and um, defined through death, uh, we are on a journey. And, and the pursuit of and, and, and where we will find happiness has become, as it were, upside down, the same way the world was turned upside down through our rebellion against God. And so, uh, really, now the pure will not be grasped here, although the pure is often pointed to here. It says in, in Psalm 19.1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. So, so creation is speaking, but it's not speaking about itself. It's pointing to the Creator. And so uh, for us to really enter, uh, escape the trap of the deception, when we feel the promises, when we hear the declarations of life, we see there's a pointer towards goodness. We need to stop and not take the wrong road of behaviors, of trying to lay claim to that experience. We need to recognize that they point to the pure, and that pure is found in God himself. How do we get there? How can we connect this heaven to earth? Well, often it's in what's not. When everything in you is tempted to do this, but God says don't do this, in not doing what it is we want to do, even though we feel there's there's life being pointed there, we are, as it were, distilling the good out of the message. How do we get through? Jesus said in John 10, 9, he said, I am the door. He who enters through me will be saved. But not only that, he says, he will come in and he will go out and he will find good pasture. The way to reach all that life points at, all that is good and holy, is through the door that is Jesus Christ. First, through him, we are saved. Our sins are forgiven. Life eternal pours into the center of our soul. But not only that then, in him and through him, we enter in, we go in, we go out. As it were, we've st we're straddling a door of the temporal and the eternal. We are connecting heaven on earth. As Jesus says in, in Matthew 6, 9 to 13, in the famous Lord's Prayer, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How is that? It's through the door of Jesus Christ. So next time, the music's pumping, you're feeling the love. Don't reach for the things that the world points to. Stop. Hear the message of creation. Hear the message and the pointers of the music and enter through the door of Jesus Christ. Obey Him. Obey His commands. Kneel before Him and you will experience that life, that life points to.